never a girl the way other girls are girls. And I was never a boy either. Always I was neither one and a little bit of both. But when I was young, fitting in was very important to me. So when puberty hit, I knew what I had to do. I had to make myself look like a girl. I remember a magazine article about applying makeup. In the article, there was a picture of a face with various sections marked off and descriptions about which makeup to apply to each section. It was fun. It was like paint by numbers on my face. And the results were about as good as my grandmother's rendition of The Last Supper. <laughs> but practice makes perfect. So over time, I learned to perfectly apply subtle shades and shadows to my face. How to use hot rollers to curl and style my long hair. How to dress in the latest feminine fashions. In fact, I was good at looking like a girl. Plus, it suited my theatrical nature. When I applied the accoutrements of femininity, I felt like I was getting ready to play a major role on Broadway. The only problem? There was never a stage, and it wasn't a script, it was my life. While looking like a girl isn't hard, exactly, it was seriously high maintenance, exhausting. I grew weary and ultimately felt oppressed by the charade of it all. Really, I'm butch, I announced to a group of gay friends when I was 19 years old. I mean I'm butch, like deep down inside. They laughed. I still had long hair, and I think I was actually wearing a sundress and sandals. At the time, I had just started coming out as gay and standing there hanging out with my three gay friends outside the student center at the University of Alabama in Tuscaloosa was about the gayest thing I'd ever done. <laughs> well, you don't look very butch, said the other lesbian in a kind of begrudging way. Well, I am butch, I declared. I just don't know how to look butch yet. A few years later, when I shaved my head, donned a pair of combat boots, slipped on some tattered jeans and a tight white t-shirt, it was thrilling. I looked in the mirror and smiled. I felt like I was finally seeing myself for the first time. To this day, it was the most liberating moment of my life. So, for my entire adult life, I've been out as butch and usually identifiable as such. Being butch is actually really easy, much more low maintenance than being femme. But living as a butch can be hard, mostly because others don't seem to feel my vibe. Does it bother you that people think you're a man, Mama once asked? No, I replied. Why should it? I know who I am and what I am. It's not my problem if people can't figure it out. I say that, but then, a lot of people can't figure it out. I get called sir and son and buddy a lot. But I don't really mind. My gender and who I am aren't dependent on whether or not others see me accurately. One time, I was having a conversation with my friend Dan, who's a younger trans queer, about gender identity. And at some point, as a joke, I said to him, just think of me as an old lady man. I'm just too old, too tired, and too cranky to deal with people's sexism and transphobia and the narrow-minded notion that there's only one way to be a woman or a man. Well, this conversation must have impressed my friend quite a bit. Later, he introduced me to a friend of his, this is Mattison, Dan said. She's an old lady man. Suddenly, it was as if old lady man was this totally legit social and political identity. Like, old lady man, unite, or we're here, we're old lady men, we want senior discounts. <laughs> I know one thing. If me and my old lady man friends ever do organize, the first thing we're taking care of is this public bathroom situation. See, if you're a lady who looks like a stereotypical lady, then using the ladies' restroom is a relatively mundane experience. But if you're an old lady man, it can get downright scary. On several occasions, I've been confronted by some very angry ladies demanding, what are you doing in here? It gets awkward when I have to say, um, I gotta pee? My voice
voice helps because it's high-pitched enough that it seems to bring the ladies to their senses. And they suddenly see me as the peculiar lady that I am. But I kid you not, more than one is that a curled fist and was ready to throw a punch. It's so bad using the ladies' room. I often ask my femme friends to accompany me. I'm scared, I tell them. There might be a lady in there. <laughs> Usually, using the men's room is a lot easier. Though one time, I was in the stall in a men's room at a bar, and these two guys entered to use the urinals. I eavesdropped on their conversation, which happened to be about the number of lesbians at this particular event. And man, the way some of these girls look, said one guy to the other, they probably pee standing up. I flushed the toilet, stepped out. They took one look at me in embarrassment, raced across their faces. That's funny, guys, I said. I do pee standing up. OK, maybe I lied. Maybe I don't pee standing up. I mean, who can bother? But sometimes people's attitudes about gender are a real drag. As someone who loves women, I fully appreciate all the special differences between men and women. I really do. But in most of life's circumstances, those differences are completely exaggerated, if not fabricated. They're based on culture and tradition, and there's not a shred of science behind them. You throw homophobia and heterosexism into the mix, and you've got a ridiculous stew of ignorance that makes life for this old lady man, just a pain in the ass. But trouble can come from all sides. In the lesbian community, for instance, butches are often expected to open doors, haul boxes, and fix things. Personally, I don't mind these tasks. I'm fairly skilled at opening doors, hauling boxes, and fixing things. But honestly, I've never dated someone so dainty she couldn't open a door, haul a box, or fix something herself. One thing I'm good at that lends me a bunch of butch cred is pumping gasoline. I love pumping gasoline. It's like my thing. I think it's hardwired, like I got the gasoline pumping gene or something. One thing I do not like, however, in every relationship, it's been my job just by some unspoken default to deal with various insects and pests. As if being butch automatically installs some internal defense against being scared shitless by vermin, which it does not. Rats are scary. Spiders as big as your hand, scary. Rats and spiders, the struggle is real. It's life or death to them. And I can tell you, neither species cares an ounce about your precious gender identity. <laughs> the funny thing is, that even butches can sometimes think that being and looking butch means something specific. One time in my 20s, a bunch of butch friends joined the rugby team. And one by one, they tried to recruit me to play. You're really butch, their arguments ran. You'll love it. I'm not really a rugby kind of butch, I finally told one of them. I'm more of an esthete than a jock. What's that mean, she asked. It means I'd rather read poetry than have all my bones broken for sport. <laughs> what I'm saying is this. I know, I make being an old lady man seem cool and all, but the struggle is real, y'all. People can lose their jobs for not presenting their gender in stereotypical ways. People face ridicule, harassment, physical assault, violence, simply for not conforming to gender norms. For some of us, the struggle really is life or death. So, maybe I will organize a bunch of old lady men. We'll make some signs, hold a parade, and maybe we'll ask people to be a little kinder, to be a little bit more compassionate, to not be so uptight about keeping what it is to be a man and what it is to be a woman so rigid, so limiting. We're all human after all, men, women, and this old lady man.